for instance, the leader of the DA. He didn't have to get a master's, you know, break his head. How did you trust that he can write a policy with a metric? Let's welcome Commissar. Thank you very much, Program Director. Good uh, morning to everybody. The leadership of uh, the BBC uh, fellow panelists. And uh, I'm, I'm with the chairperson of the EFF in Gauteng, who is also the MMC of finance here in the city of Ekuruleni. His name is Nkulule Wotunga. I, I want him to stand because I think there are people who want business or whatever. You should know him. <laughs> Uh, please wave. Uh, uh, this is the MMC. You know, EFF is in government here in a Grulene, very important, uh, in, in, in Johannesburg as well, the city that uh, the speaker after me um, used to be the mayor there, and they lost uh, dramatically, and they're still losing. Just yesterday, they lost the ward. Uh, down in uh, El in Ennerdale. This, this losing is consistent <laughs> with uh, with BEE. BEE. I think that uh, perhaps the facts speak for themselves. BEE is a dramatic failure. Uh, of the listed companies in South Africa's JSE, uh, less than 3% are black owned, 100% black owned. Women ownership is even worse. Actually, BEE is uh, largely a black boys club, consistent with uh, the white boys club that owns all of us. The tragedy from the very beginning was the naivety to think that the oppressor can give you the means to defeat him. BEE is based on that tragic logic. If you look at the sector targets, are themselves very much embarrassing. Nothing in terms of the ownership of the economy of South Africa reflects the demographic profile of our country. But if you look at the targets of ownership, sector by sector, we are still not targeting the actual profile of the representation of black people in the country. It tells you already from the beginning we are moving from a defeated perspective. And capitalism in its nature is the, it's the cold, ruthless march of profit for profit's sake. How could you depend on people whose intention, whose entire project in life is the pursuit of money for money's sake to transform anything. So it was naive in our view from the beginning to think you could ask South Africa's white capitalist owners to include number one black people, number two to transform the economy against their own domination. We've got to look elsewhere. So as the EFF, which were proudly a politically socialist uh, uh, organization, we don't, we don't have any hopes that BEE can transform the economy. How much lack of confidence must you have? And this is another important thing about the ANC. The ANC doesn't believe in black people. Wherever they are situating black people, they want them to be under some white supervision. The, the tragedy of ESCOM tells you the amount of confidence they had on the Reuters. <laughs> defending him left, right, and center. Pure white incompetence. But everywhere that they have done, the, the entire approach to the economic transformation of the country, to the economic development of the country, is about the fact that they can't do anything without white supervision. There is no single developed country in the world, and this is a fact, 
In the history of capitalist development, there's no single country in the world that developed by putting faith in the private pursuit of profit for profit's sake. No capitalist on their own, anywhere, particularly in Euro America, developed any country. Most, in fact, all the developed countries have had the state at the center of development. So, number one, how are we going to transform South Africa? We can't give up on the state. The Americans didn't. After World War II, go look what Euro-America did. At the center of the recovery, before they privatized under Thatcher, were state-owned companies were protected industrial development, protecting them from international competition, the policies that were called protection of infant industries, such that when they are big and competent, then they let them go into the market. The state must be at the center of the development of South Africa's economy. So what has happened to the state in the last 30 years? It is a neoliberal disorganization So the local state, everywhere you find it, what we call the tender is the faith that everybody must get a business and do the things that the state should provide. You've got to build internal state capacity to deliver the services that are supposed to be delivered by a government. Government must build a road because it must not only build a road, it must maintain it. Government must provide quality education. Government must be able to cut the grass in all the parks. All those low-hanging fruits, you cannot deliver them to the private sector. And what becomes the state role in the creation of big business? Proper business, innovative business. Not chance takers who are busy asking you know, for small favors in exchange of uh, bribes. Proper, proper business. Black people can't participate in innovative businesses for a very simple reason. Because you don't have a bank of your own. The South African banks don't believe in you. They don't believe in black talent. They'll never give you enough money to be able to become a captain of industry. There's nothing we can do until we have a bank of our own. So step number one, we need a bank, and that bank must become a state bank. That is going to give you, that is going to waste money on you, like the apartheid government did on Africaners. That is going to give you funding, give you 40 years minimum, like Toyota. The story of Toyota, which at the moment, there's no village in the world without a Toyota in the world. But if you look at the the story of Toyota, it was properly supported by the state for 40 years until it became the giant that it is. It's the story of a number of companies. The, The strongest agricultural sector in the world is in the United States, but it's the most protected from international competition. We cannot give up on the state because the ANC destroyed it. It is the only it is the only thing you have as black people. You can't fold your arms and all go into a mode of condemning government. It is the only shield. It is the only gain of the liberation movement. We've got to build state capacity. We've got to use the government. We've got to use the state to transform our lives. White people are not going to develop you. White people are not going to save you from poverty. If you don't know, the last 30 years is evidence. White people themselves, to become the rich people that they are, used the state. They could have made it without the state. They were protected by the state. They were funded by the state. They were given all types of opportunities by the state. You have to save your state. Don't surrender it to corrupt people. Don't surrender it. To people who don't believe in black talent. We've got to save the state and strengthen it. Use it to transform and shift tectonically 
the ownership patterns in the country. In the private sector, you will not survive. You will not succeed. So number one, we must build our state internal capacity, build state-owned companies. Number two, we need our own bank, and we need it yesterday. Without a bank, we are going nowhere. Finally, black people, I don't know who lied to us. We cannot continue calling this place our country when we do not own the land. Actually, the most untransformed of the sectors in terms of this BEE arrangement is the agricultural sector. Land is everything. Gwama and Jinje were on the land. Even if you want a saloon, it has to be on the land. Perhaps that is the genesis of everything. Without the land, we are visitors in this country. You can hate foreign nationals all you want. There are people who are campaigning everywhere, program director, that our problem is foreign nationals. Foreign nationals, Gwabani. Gwaba, you are a foreigner yourself. We've got to get back the land. We do not have the land. And therefore, I appeal, I invite all of us as black people to be unapologetic. Even if your interests are entrepreneurial in relation to the fourth industrial revolution, you will not be able to even do the fourth industrial revolution without the land. You don't have land. That's why the banks won't give you funding. Because you don't have the land. We have to get back our land. We have to build internal state capacity and use the state to transform the economy. Thirdly, we need our own bank. That is the path to economic freedom. Commissar <laughs> Lossi. One, two, okay. No, 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 thanks very much. I, I, I think that it's very sad for Comrade Parks to have responded to the absence of a government entity the way he did. For you represent the ruling party here. I mean, the, the best answer could have been we will look to why they are not here. Conference is still going on as far as I have understood and say we'll force them to come tomorrow. To say, ah, oh, it's not your role. I, it's sad. It's very sad for me. I'm, I'm living here very sad with that answer. <laughs> you see, uh, the problem of racism, my brother, is, is that a lot of white people don't have to do much in order to get business. They don't even have to go to school. And, you know, a lot... Not leave business, anything in, in the world, anything in life. They don't have to be too educated. For instance, the leader of the DA. <laughs> he didn't have to get a master's, you know, break his head. How did you trust that he can write a policy with a metric? <laughs> because he's white. White people don't have to do much. So it's, we're not saying really in relation to there are people in the town. The problem with at least where I come from and I've worked all over South Africa is that I know in my own class at Skolwe, there were more smarter kids than me who were getting A's, who passed metric better than me. And even in the university, there were, there were a lot. I remember them some of which are now loitering in the streets because the system would not allow a majority of us to enter. It already, as a predetermination, only allows the few. So it's not because of your hard work or you are special or because of anointing. It's the system. <laughs> and the system has to be changed. So I'm not going to leave here with the idea in the head of black people that they are the problem. They are the reason they are not successful. No, it is a system which we have to change. The final point I want to make is, 
I have, I have, the, it's the biggest, most important point for me, if you have to forget everything that I said, we need a bank. <laughs> we need a bank. Le- okay, leave other, let's just, all of us, gather in 2024 at the voting stations and vote for anyone who's going to start a bank the day after elections. That is going to support black people on any things. That is going to give money to schools. That is going to give money to... Because we already have the money, but we are not organizing it in the financial sector in order to reinvest in our opportunities. The bank that is state-owned that is going to focus on black people is the genesis of transformation. Without it, every effort is futile. It's organized capital that we must organize through a bank and invest in ourselves. So we must have a state bank. The NC is very scared. They have, they have no willingness to take the land. They have no willingness to start a bank. They are too scared. And I don't know who they are scared of. Because for 30 years, everything that they did did not work. He can tweak and tweak the policies. They are not go- it's not even the policies most of the time. It's the bravery, the willingness to go on and start institutions that the entire white community is going to be scared of because they won't be special anymore. So we, we must start a state bank and we must make sure that it is run properly and we punish harshly people who steal public funds. That's the philosophy, that's the formula. Thank you very much. Thank you.